Um, hello, everyone. Um, welcome to church. <laughs> For those that are watching, I hope you are blessed by today's service. I believe that today's service is going to be a transforming service for many people's lives. I think um, God has been speaking, and and um, I've been I've been talking about the Book of Revelations and um, how the mic is good. Hallelujah. So I'm going to just keep going. I, I hate when people interrupt me, but last, the first week, um, I talked about the rapture because I believe, you know, we're living in some times right now that, that, that we could see things happening. And, and I know God is calling his people to, to pray and to get serious and, and for us to, to get hungry for him, you know, and, and get down on our faces and, and seek him in spirit and in truth and with all, you know, everything that we have, you know, just lay it on the line. And then last week I talked about um, the second coming and, and I want, I don't want no one to be lost. So that's why I preached that message because I want us all to come back, you know, on the white horses with Jesus Christ. Amen. That, that's, I love that, you know, Revelations 19. That's my favorite, you know, chapter in, in the book of Revelations. And that's my heart's desire as a pastor that, that we all, you know, are saved. And not only, you know, my desire, that's Christ's desire too. Because he says in the Bible that he desires for all, none to be lost, for everyone to be saved. And that's why I preach. And I, I, I would have never seen myself right now in preaching something like this. But, you know, that's what God called me to do. And that's what I'm doing. And, but today I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something different today. Because I believe um, that, that we're living in, in times that there is a lot of distraction out there. And, and I know that God wants us to get you know, on fire to seek his face and, and to be, you know, to, to grab that first love that we had, that, that desire, oh, I want, you know, all I want is Christ. And, but there's so much stuff going on out there. And, and you know, I preach and probably on, on, on Sunday, everybody's like, yeah, yeah, you know, I, I'm, 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 I'm there and I want to be with Christ. But then throughout the week, you know, everything goes out the window because you have so many things, school, work, and, and you know, so many, all this news and how many people died and this and that. And there's so much stuff out there that, you know, it's hard to, like, stay focused in prayer and, you know, seeking God. I don't know if that happens to anybody, but it happens to me because, you know, you wake up in the morning and my phone has, like, like 20 messages, Fox News, this and this happened, and this and this happened. Thank God I get different news now, because before it was just coronavirus. Now there's, you know, at least, you know, I get some different kind of news. But that is like a distraction, because the enemy does not want us to be on fire for God. He, this is a time for us to get closer to God, but the enemy doesn't want that. But God... This week, God showed me something. He says, you need to go back to something that I showed you a couple years ago. So I'm like, all right, Lord, amen. So today I'm going to go back to this, you know. And I know for us to get closer to God, we need prayer. We need to get in God's word. We need fasting. Amen. I, I believe that. I believe that. I said that last week that we need for us to get closer to God. We need to seek him. The Bible says in Matthew 6, 33, first seek the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, you know, and, and he'll add everything on. And I believe that's what we need. And a couple of years ago, God took us to, to a church in, in Louisiana, it, well, it, God guided my wife to, to, um, to look up this church that we seen a video that was like powerful. And then from that video, we seen something else and, and we, we seen the pastor, he came out on TBN and this church 
this church is called POA, um, Pentecostal Church of Alexandria. And my wife told me, I want to go over there for, for my birthday, right? For your birthday. I want to go over there for my birthday. And, and we went. And when we were there, we found favor there with the pastor. He was like, hey, this, and we're not even from there or anything. And, you know, we met him and we went to his office and, you know, and little by little, we become to have a relationship with him. And, but, but the point that I want to make is that this church, they've been praying for over 40 years, like nonstop. They, they have a chain of prayer in the church 24-7 for over 40 years. This is, this is something powerful. Amen. And when you walk into this church, you, you feel the power of God. Amen. You guys been in there. You feel God's presence there. And, and it's powerful. So, so um, something that we learned there was called the, the tabernacle prayer. Amen. And this is this is powerful because this prayer allows you to stay focused in prayer because I don't know about anybody else. But for me, I when sometimes I'll start praying and in the middle of my prayer, like something will come into my head. Oh, but I forgot that I needed to put that much water into this cement and you know, some stupid stuff. I don't know if that happens to you, but it happens to me. And I'm like, I'm praying and, and I'm talking, I'm thinking about, no, because my bicycle, my chain on my bicycle might come off because it's like, hello, you know, I, I'm having some time with God and my mind is somewhere else. I don't know if that happens to you guys, but it happens to me. And, you know, I'm real. I, 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 I say how it is, you know, and we learned this prayer that's called the tabernacle prayer there in, in this church. And the pastor, he, he, you know, he, he told us about it and he had a whole tabernacle outside of his, like in the lobby and, and we were, we participated in it. It was awesome. It was powerful. And, and the good, the thing about the tabernacle prayer is that when you start the prayer, there's different, um, stages. Like, like if, if we look at the tabernacle, I'm talking about the tabernacle of Moses the in the in the in the desert. If you look at it, there's a gate, there's a there's different furniture and throughout every single furniture you have a different prayer. So this allows you to stay focused, you know, like here I need to do this, here I need to do that. So your mind is not all over the place. And we started doing it in the church, but you see what happened? What happened to it? Why we stopped doing it, right or wrong? Why? Because the enemy didn't want us to keep doing it. Because when we were doing it, we were concentrated, and and there was there's no distraction. And this is not only for the church. I'm talking about. I think this is more powerful in your own time to do it than in the church as as a as a unit. Because as a unit, you're praying in church. And you're not really thinking about stuff because you're thinking about, you know, hey, I'm not going to be thinking about other stuff. But when you're in your home and you're praying, that's when your mind starts drifting everywhere. So I believe this tabernacle prayer is more powerful when you're doing it in the house. And I believe if if I don't think that I'm going to be able to go through all the furniture today, I know for sure I ain't. I'm not, but I'm going to try to do as best as I can. I'm going to. I'm going to load this video on YouTube afterwards and you know on YouTube you could like double click and it goes back and it rewinds and stuff like that so you know you could and if you have notes you might want to start writing them down you might want to go right now and get a piece of paper and write down some notes because what I'm going to give you today is going to is it could change your prayer life it could change not only your prayer life it could change your life completely if you follow this plan. And, and let me tell you, the enemy is not going to want you to follow his plan. But if, if you're listening to me right now, go get a piece of paper and write this down. And, and listen to this preaching over and over again. Because if you start following this plan, let me tell you, your life is going to be transformed. I guarantee you that. I guarantee you. But we need to get serious. And I'm talking to, to you guys because we did the tabernacle prayer, but we were not serious about it. 
I, I know what I'm telling you. We're not serious. We're going to do it now. And when we open the church, we're, we're going to start doing the, the tabernacle prayer again. And we're going to be serious about it. But today I'm going to go through, through wherever I can and, and we're going to do this. Amen? Amen. And the reason why that I want to do this is because I want people's lives to be changed. And if you follow this plan, your life will be changed. And I do this because that's what I do. <laughs> Amen. So I'm going to start with a scripture. Exodus 25, 8. It says, And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Amen. I, that's, I believe we are the temple of the Holy Spirit now. But he was telling Moses, you know, make a sanctuary. And that is the tabernacle. And that is what we're going to start going through. And I'm going to start teaching today. And, and, and I, told, I told them to bring notes because when we finish, whatever, wherever furniture I stop, we're going we're gonna to do a little, we're going to do a little prayer. We're going to do like a little, how, how do you say that? Uh, preview. A preview. So, so I, the people that are watching could understand a little bit about what it's about. Amen. How many of how many people are excited out there to do the tabernacle prayer? Amen. <laughs> Amen. What about you guys that are watching? Okay, Exodus 25, and let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Okay, the first place. Oh, I, I even got a picture. I even went to the internet and got a picture of it so I could so I could show you as I go. The first one, the first place that you go through is the gate. Amen? Amen. Let me see. Oh, I, I'm going to have to put some daylight on this. There you go. All right. All right. This is, this is the tabernacle. You think they could see there? You can't see it? No. All right. Don't worry about it. All right. So this is, you guys could look it up in the internet and just look up a tabernacle, a Moses tabernacle, and it's going to show you. So the first place that you get to is called the gate. The gate is where we acknowledge Jesus Christ. He is the door that we go in through. Amen. Amen. This is the first place. So the gate is the door. That the place that we confess um, Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. In the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it declares different things. Matthew declares him as God with us. Mark declares him as the Messiah. Luke as power of God manifested. And John saw him as the Lamb of God. When we enter the gate, we need to acknowledge Jesus Christ as all in all. So when we're walking through that first place of the tabernacle, when we walk in through that gate, we're saying, I acknowledge you, Jesus, as the door, the door to heaven. This is the place that I come in and I acknowledge you as my Lord and Savior. Father, you are my Lord and Savior. I walk through this door. Amen. We are his. Amen. This is where we need to confess him as as our savior of our lives. Um, and this gate, in if we go to Psalms 100, it says, "Enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise." So when we got saved, what did we do? We praised him. When I got saved, like I've said in even in my book, I think I cried for a whole week. Because I was so happy. I praised him. I was like, oh my God, I can't believe that I was such a sinner. And he came and saved me. I, I, it was like, I, I didn't believe him. So it was the gate. I, I came in through the gate. And that's what the gate is at. And, and Psalms 100 says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. So when we get into that gate and we walk in through that gate, in the first part of our prayer, we like, Lord, I enter the gate. I am going to praise you. 
I'm going to praise you for my salvation. I am saved because you died on the cross. And today I am going to praise you. And I am going to enter this great gate with thanksgiving and praise. Also, we need to spend a little time there. It's not like, oh, we're going to go through all the pieces of furniture. And that's it. Oh, blah, 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 blah. No, no, no. We need to spend time in each piece of furniture. Amen. It's not like, oh, we're going to rush through the whole thing because we have done it like that. We've like, oh, bah, 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 and rushed through the whole thing. No, we, we, need to, we need to let the Holy Spirit, we need to let Rehua HaKadesh come in there and just and, and move, move in this whole, you know, prayer thing. And, and you're going to see things are going to fall off your life. God is going to start transforming people's life through this prayer tabernacle that we're going to start doing. And I pray to God that you start doing it because you're going to see as I go through this, how God's power could be manifested in your life. First Thessalonians 518. You know, I'm going to give scripture. It says in all things, give thanks for this. The will of God is in Christ Jesus concerning you, we need to give God thanks. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord. First Thessalonians 5.18. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. How many of us could say thank you to Jesus? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, yes, God. thank you because he's faithful. He's faithful. He's faithful. ha Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He's faithful. How many of us feel good right now? Yes. You know why? Because we've been saved. We all have gone through that gate. We all, everyone, there's a lot. Well, and if you haven't gone through that gate, today might be the day that you say, look, I'm ready to go through this gate. I've been wasting my life because I wasted many years of my life until I said, Lord, I walk into the gates. I walk into your gates. I walk through your doors. Amen. Amen. And that, that and it literally that happened in my life because the Lord told me you need to walk through this door. <laughs> if you read my book, I, it's exactly what happened to me. I needed to walk through that door and that door, that gate is salvation. And through that, we need to praise him for it and give him thanks. Amen. Amen. But the thing is that once we go into the gate, there's there's a courtyard there amen and 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 in that courtyard there is there's people there in the courtyard as as you see in the so once you come in it says you give them praise and then in let's go to psalms 150 also verse 1 and 2 it says praise the lord praise god in his sanctuary you see we need to keep praising him Praise Him in His mighty heavens. Praise Him for His acts of power. Praise Him for His surpassing greatness. So when we come into the gates, we're going to what? Praise Him. We're going to give Him thanks. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And, and um, the next piece of furniture that we go to is the altar of sacrifice. <laughs> so write it down. The next furniture is the altar of sacrifice. And the altar of sacrifice, the, what they used it for was to sacrifice <laughs> to sacrifice animals and and this is this is the place where we need to start sacrificing things in our lives amen when we get to the altar of sacrifice the second place in our prayer is when we start sacrificing stuff amen The thing is that when we get to this place of sacrifice, the enemy knows that we mean business. Okay? If we stay at the gate, if we stay at, at the point of salvation, we're not really a threat to the enemy. 
But when we get to the altar of sacrifice, we become a threat. And the thing is that some people, I'm not going to, some people, they get to the altar of sacrifice and when pressure starts hitting, they, they run back to the gate. <laughs> because the altar of sacrifice, that's when things start, needs to start coming off of our lives. Amen. We need to start stripping things off of our lives. Who's with me? Who's here in the room? Who's with me? Who, who do you think? What, what, do you think God is, this is something that, that God is speaking in? I believe it. I think so. Because there is a lot of distraction out there. And this is going to help us get connected to God. This is going to help us get connected. So when we get to this sacrifice, we need to start sacrificing things. The priests used to come to each horn and, and used to place blood on the horns. Amen. The altar was made out of bronze and wood. Bronze meaning sacrifice and wood meaning the cross. So this altar of, of sacrifice is Jesus Christ. Amen. If we look at the whole tabernacle, it is Christ. And you're going to see how, as I, as I keep going, how everything in this tabernacle has to do with Christ. So the altar was made out of bronze and wood. Bronze meaning sacrifice and wood the cross. I got this, um, this little thing from the internet that I want to read to you. It says, many people interpret the, the cross as some burden they must carry in their lives, as strained relationship, a thankless job, a physical illness. With self-pity, pride, they say, that is my cross I have to carry. Such an interpretation is not what Jesus meant when he said, take up your cross and follow me. When Jesus carried his cross up to be crucified, no one was thinking of the cross as a symbolic, a symbolic of a burden to carry. To a person in the first century, the cross meant one thing and one thing only. Death by the most painful, humiliating means human beings could develop. So when we step up to this altar... It is death. We need to start killing stuff in our lives. Killing stuff that is, that is holding us back from us going to the next level. This is an area that we need to start repenting and asking the Lord for forgiveness for things that we're doing that we know that He does not like us to do. How many of us have do things that we know that God doesn't want us to do? All of us everyone but when we get to this place we start saying lord burn it away burn this stuff away out of my life take this out of my life forgive me forgive me of my debts of my debts like you forgive those like what we did this morning you know we forgave those amen and we need to ask the lord to forgive us also this is where we confess our sins to the lord when we get to this altar it's like lord I am at the altar, forgive me for my sins, forgive me for my rebellion, forgive me for my pride, forgive me for lust, forgive me for the works of the flesh. This is the place that we throw all our stuff in and we start burning it. We need to start taking, asking the Lord to forgive us. Lord, we sacrifice this. Lord, I sacrifice this idol in my life. I don't know, maybe it's your son, your daughter, your girlfriend, whoever. Whoever is an idol in your life, this is the place that you say, Lord, I come into your gates with thanksgiving, but now I'm at the altar of sacrifice. I'm going to sacrifice some things that I know that are not pleasing to you. Amen? So the next piece of furniture is the brazing laver. And we could find this in Exodus 38.8. It says, They made a bronze basin and its bronze stand from the mirrors of the women who served at the entrance to the tent of meetings. This is, a, this is the place after like the, 
in I'm, I'm gonna do it as the tabernacle after they did the the sacrifice the priest would come and they will wash their hands there it's like a big basin it's a big pot that was full of water and from what it says here it was made from from bronze and the mirrors of the women who served at the entrance so it was a big round bowl that had mirrors in it and that's where the priests used to come and wash their hands after the blood sacrifice amen so this is a place that we're gonna come and we're gonna wash also Amen. We're going to wash all impurity. Everything that we left back there, we're going to wash here in this place. This is the place where we're going to wash our hands, our feet, everything, all past burdens, everything that 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 has has um we left at at the burnt offering at the altar of sacrifice. We're going to we're going to clean it here and we're going to say, "Lord, clean my hands." Here, you know, Create a, a new person in me, uh, a renewed heart, a right spirit within you. You know, I'll allow, this is a place that, that, that we could open the Bible and, and, and get some scripture. Amen. And, and we could start like reading a scripture so the mirrors of the water could reflect you know what I mean? His word into our lives because his word washes us clean. Amen. His, that's what his that's what the word does it reflects our our filthiness amen so so when we get into this part you know when we get into this um brazing altar and and the in this basin we start washing lord and we wash ourselves with his word and and we ask the lord you know reflect us show us exactly what needs to be done you know through his word we open the bible in in the book of james 1 23 and 24 it says anyone who listens to his word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looks at himself goes away immediately and forgets what he looks at this is not what we're going to do this is this is the opposite of what we're going to do we're going to go into this place we're going to wash lord show me whatever imperfection i did not take care of in the altar of sacrifice show me here show me in your word and if you need a Go like this and reverse and go backwards and say, okay, I'm going to go back and do some more sacrificing because I, I didn't really, I, God showed me this here and I need to fix this also. Amen. So are you guys understanding me? Amen. So this is something else that we need to do. We need to show and, and we need to not forget. We need to keep going. L look what it says in the book of John in, in um, chapter 13, verse 8. This is what Peter said. He said to him, you shall never wash my feet. This is when Jesus went to wash their feet. And he said, John said, you'll never wash my feet. Jesus answered to him, if I do not wash your feet, you have no part with me. So Jesus wants to wash us. Amen. Jesus, when we get to this place, it's like, Lord, wash me clean. You know what I mean? And, and when he, we allow his word to wash us, we, we become clean. This is where a place that, that, that um, he says here, you have no part of me. So we need to wash so we could have that communion with Christ. Amen. Amen. And look what, look what Jesus says. This is, this is cool. I found this. It says, you are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. This is in John 15, 3. You see, the word that he says, the word that was spoken to you. So the word that is spoken is what makes us clean. Mm. You've seen that. You've seen that, right? Yes. You see, he says, you're already clean because the word I have spoken to you. So when we get to this place, Lord, you know, speak to me. Open your Bible. Say, Lord, speak to me through your word because your word is what makes me clean. Amen. Another scripture in John 9, 7, it says, And he said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated, sent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. Amen. God wants us to go wash in the pool. So when we come back, we could see every little imperfection, everything that is wrong in our lives. When we get to this place, this is a powerful place in, in our prayer. Amen. This is a place that when we get here, we're like, Lord, I need, I need to be washed. 
Amen? Amen. And this is a place where God is going to show us our faults, our shortcomings, and, and He's going to teach us also to live righteous lives because that's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible does. We're going to take out every last impurity in our lives with the Word of God. And then after this is when we go, we're going to go into the, the tent of meeting. This is where we, <laughs> this, is, this is the, this is where, where, where we, we get serious with God. Amen. When the, when the priests used to come out of the, of the washing of the hands, what they did afterwards was they got dressed with priestly garments before they, got, they went into the tent of meeting. Because in the tent of meetings is the holy place and the holy of holies. That's, that's the tent of meetings. But before they went in there, after the sacrifice and after they washed, they went and put on um, <clears throat> priestly garments. And I, and I think it's the same for us. When we get to this point of our prayer, it's not about us anymore. When, we go, when we're going to go into the holy place, it's not about us anymore. That's it. We, 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 we thanked Him at the gate. Amen. We came into the burnt offering. We sacrificed. And now we're clean. So it's not about us anymore. Now it's about Him. Amen. We're going into the holy place. Now it's about us with Him. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, this is powerful. If we follow this pattern, you're going to see your life transformed. Because now we're in a place that is not about us anymore. It's about Him. It's about we're going to change our clothes. We're, we're, we have taken everything, all impurity, everything that is no good, we have taken it off. And now we're putting on some priestly garments. So it's not about that anymore. It's about where we're going right now. But before we get into the Holy of Holies, there's five posts. And those five posts, we're going we're gonna, to um, we're gonna preach. I'm going to give you another scripture. Because this is the door that's going to get us to the holy place. In the book of John 14, 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Amen. And let's go, because each one of these poles has a name. Amen. Um, Pastor Megan, he, his dad, um, he, 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 put a, he gave each pole a name. So as we're, we're going to pray for each pole before we go into the holy place. And each pole has a different name. Amen. So through, through all this prayer is where we're going to get each pole has a name. And, and he got this from the book of Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. It says, For us, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulders. And his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Those are the five poles. We're going to pray those five names through this tabernacle prayer. Amen. The New Testament also, the angels announced him in Luke Chapter 1, verse 31 and 32, it says, And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call, him, his, shall call his name Jesus, and he will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his fathers, of the father of David. So when we come up to these five pillars, the first one is called wonderful. So write it down. The first one is called wonderful. The second one is counselor. The third one is mighty God. The fourth one is everlasting father. And the fifth one is prince of peace. So let me say it again. This is, this is a very important because right now it's not about us anymore. Now it's about Jesus 
and him. Amen. We've put on new priestly garments. The first one, wonderful. Second, counselor. Third, mighty God. Fourth, everlasting father. Fifth, prince of peace. This is one of the most important parts of our prayer. This is going to take a little while. So, and we can't, this is going to take all distraction out of our lives. And this part is going to change our lives. Amen. The first one of our post is called Wonderful. Amen. When we get here, you start proclaiming how wonderful Jesus is. Amen. Amen. This wonderful, we start declaring that he is so wonderful to us and, and, and everything. Think about, think about how wonderful Christ has been. I, how many of us could say wonderful things about him? Mm-hmm. Amen. So this is, this is a point when we get here, Lord, you are wonderful. You're wonderful. Your name is wonderful. Everything about you is wonderful. Amen. This is, there's, basically, there is no way to explain how wonderful Christ has been in our lives. Amen. Who got Bibles? We're going to read a couple of scriptures. Let's go to the book of Matthew 27. Matthew 27, 28. Not 27, I'm sorry. Matthew 7, 28. My bad. We're going to see in the, in, the, in the New Testament all the places where it says, well, a couple places, that He's amazing. God is amazing. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, God is amazing. Jesus is amazing. He is wonderful. Amen. And the Bible declares it over and over again that he's marvelous, he's amazing, he's wonderful. And when we get to here, we're like, Lord, you are marvelous. You are amazing. You are wonderful. Amen. Hallelujah. Matthew 7, 28. Who got it? When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching. He was there amazed. Amen. Who's amazed at what Jesus has done in your life? Amen. That that that's that's what this poll is about. That's what this pillar is about. Amen. His amazing eight twenty seven Matthew. Let's stay in Matthew eight twenty seven. The disciples were amazed. Who is this man? They asked. Even the winds and waves obey him. Hallelujah. How many of us are amazed at Jesus? Amen. I'm amazed at what he's done in my life. I am very amazed. I don't know about you, but I'm amazed that that Jesus even allowed me to write a book. That's amazing in itself. So how how can I not come into this pillar right here and say, Lord, you're amazing. You, you, a sinner like me, preaching the gospel? You're amazing. I guarantee you everyone out there has something to say about how amazing God is in their lives. Because the Bible, the disciples, the people, everybody was amazed about what Jesus did. Amen. Amen? Because Jesus is amazing. Mm -hmm. He's wonderful. How many of us could say he's wonderful? He's wonderful. wonderful. Hallelujah. Matthew 13, 54. Last one. Matthew thirteen fifty four. There's no fifty four. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I'm like, whoa. He returned to Naz- Nazareth, his hometown. When he taught there in the synagogue, everyone was amazed and said, "Where does he get this wisdom and power to do these miracles?" Hallelujah! Everyone is amazed. I don't know about you, but I'm amazed. So when we get this, when we get to this first pillar, we start saying, "Lord, you're marvelous." You're marvelous. You've been marvelous to me. There's no one like you. Jesus, you are so wonderful. Amen. Thank him. Thank him. 
for everything that he has done, for everything that he has done in your life, what he has done in your family. Lord, you're amazing. You're wonderful. You're wonderful. You are wonderful in my life. You, uh, thank you for the church. Thank you because you you have been there for me from the beginning. Amen. I'm amazed at who you are, Jesus Christ. Amen. You start telling him and 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 you, you could even like like picture in your mind and and see that first pillar and and hug that first pillar and say lord you're amazing you're wonderful you're wonderful get down on your knees and and tell the lord right there you're going to lose 10 minutes of your prayer time just at that first point lord you're amazing you're wonderful hallelujah now the second pole is called what counselor, counselor. woo hallelujah he, he is our counselor. We need counseling. And right now, in these times we're living right now, we need some counseling. Amen. So this is a crucial pull in, in, in a pillar in our lives right now, what we're living right now. In the book of Isaiah eleven twelve, no, no, eleven two. it says, The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel, and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. The Bible speaks a high premium of counseling. Throughout the Bible, we need to be counseled. Amen. Proverbs 1 5 says, A wise man will hear and increase learning, a man of understanding will obtain wise counsel. We need counsel god we need to come to this poll and say lord i need your counsel remember these pillars are about jesus christ we're praising him now we're asking him to counsel us amen when we look at jesus uh, christ as our counselor we start understanding that we cannot do anything in our lives without him counseling us Think about how many things when you get to this poll, Lord, I need your counsel. Lord, I, I need you to counsel my family. Lord, I need you to counsel my life. First of all, you, you need his counseling. Amen. And then, and then you start asking, you know, counsel our president, counsel the cabinet. Count, there's so many things that today need counseling. Counsel my, my, my grandmother, whoever. We all need counseling. And this is a this is a crucial poll. Proverbs fifteen twenty two says, "Without counsel, plans go awry." That means if you don't got counsel, counsel in your life. If you're not asking Jesus for counsel, your plans are basically, I could say, garbage. Right? They're gonna go away. So the Bible says in Proverbs. That we need his counsel. Without counsel, our plans are no good for nothing. Amen. And then it says, but in the multitude of counselors, there they are established. We will be established when we come to know Jesus as our counselor. When you start praying for your family, Lord, counsel my family. You know, do this. They need counsel. God is going to, we need God to counsel our lives. We need to stop seeking God and our own understanding and count and ask him to counsel us. Amen. Amen. We need God's counsel in our lives. And not only do we need, when we come to this poll, we asking God for counsel, but we also need to um, listen to God. We need and a lot of people like to do a lot of prayer, but they don't like to listen to what God is saying also. Amen. We need to listen to what God is saying. We need, because how is he going to counsel us and we don't know what to do? That's why we need to also listen. We can't just, oh, Lord, counsel me and counsel this and, and, and do this. But we need to know what he's saying too. So we need to stop sometimes and say, Lord, counsel me, but I need to listen to what you're saying too. Amen. And that's we get that from his word. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And um something that I wrote here that is very key that 
Now, I'm going to tell you, if we're not asking the Lord for counsel, somebody else is going to eventually counsel us, right? (laughs) (laughs) So, we need to be asking Him for counsel. Because if we're not asking Him for counsel, basically somebody else is going to counsel us. There's a lot of people out there with a lot of good advice. That A lot of good advice that we don't need to even be listening to. We need God's counsel in our lives. That's why when we get to this poll, we need to ask God for counsel. Amen? Because the enemy also likes to give his counsel in our lives. And that's the truth. From the beginning, from the beginning, who, who came to counsel Eve? The devil. Oh no, because this is this and this and that. And let me tell you, if you're not asking for God's counsel, the enemy will be very happy to counsel you. I guarantee you that. He'll be very quick to start telling you, no, I think you should do this and this and this and that. So that's why in this poll is very crucial in our prayer, our tabernacle prayer, because we're asking God for counsel. Amen. We we can't because if if we're not asking, somebody else is going to counsel us any way you put it. But we need to ask the Lord To counsel us. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why um, we need to ask the Lord for counsel. Amen. When we start praying, we start asking Him to counsel, counsel us, to start moving in our lives, and start guiding every step of our lives. Amen. Amen. This is where we let... Rehua Hakadesh come in and 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 start guiding us because basically he's called the counselor, right? <laughs> so for you guys that don't know, that's the Holy Spirit, Amen. So he's the one that is gonna come and bring counsel in our lives. So we start asking for counsel, so we could hear his voice, Amen. And we need him to be speaking into our lives, not no one else, Amen. And this is what we need to be doing every day. This tabernacle prayer could change your life. This tabernacle prayer is going to take all distraction out of your life. And it's going to bring you into what He wants in your lives. Amen. Amen. So then we're going to go into the third post. What is it? Mighty God. Ooh, hallelujah. Mighty God. This is... <clears throat> where we um we're gonna come to this post and we're gonna declare him to be mighty. Amen. Mighty for what? To save. Mighty for what else? Deliverance. Deliverance. Mighty to 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 um to and and we're gonna start praying for for pastors. We're gonna start praying for missionaries. We're gonna start praying for evangelists. We're going to start praying for people around the world because they need a mighty God in their lives. We're going to start praying for missionaries, anybody that is preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. When we get to this pillar, mighty God, we're going to start praying for people. Amen. We're going to start praying for people that that need his manifestation in their lives, that need his, his power. Amen. That need him in their lives. Make God mighty in these evangelists, pastors. That's where you're going to come in um, and pray for Pastor Eddie and say, I need Pastor Eddie to keep going, to keep going forward. Amen. Lord, um, bless this pastor. Bless this missionary. Bless those that are, that are preaching the gospel out there. Amen. Amen. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just finish at the five posts. And then next week, I'm going to go into the holy place. And, and the Holy of Holies. So, pole number four, post or pillar number four is what? Everlasting, everlasting Father. He is everlasting. Amen. And here is what we'll pray. That the name of Jesus will be exalted over everything. Amen? Amen. He is everlasting. This is where we're going to come and pray for the sick. This is where we're going to pray for the people that that are afflicted. This is where we're going to pray for those that are homeless. Because this is not about us anymore. Amen? This is about 
everything else now. This is what we're gonna we're gonna pray for for those that are there that are in um drug addictions. The homeless. Did I say that already? Mm-hmm. The the ladies or men that are being um sexually abused. Kids that are being born with Down syndrome. This is the place that we're going to pray for those that are suffering from this coronavirus. That have cancer or whatever situation, diabetes. This is where we're going to pray for for all sicknesses. Even some incurable disease. Amen. Hallelujah. Parkinson's. Everything. Everything that, that has to do with a disease. This is where we're going to come and say, Lord, you could, you could heal this person. Amen? Amen? This is where we say, Lord Jesus, you are what? Everlasting, Everlasting Father. Forever. Amen? What, what does everlasting mean? Forever. Not ending. He doesn't end. Amen? Forever and ever and ever. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I believe that when we're in this time of prayer, I think this is God's perfect will. Amen. Think of, just think about this for a second. Think about everything that I've been saying, those that are listening. Imagine you start doing this every morning. What in your in your in in your little thinking Think about what it will happen if you start doing this every morning. Think about it. This is crazy. If you start doing this every day, every morning, this, let me tell you, what will happen in your life is, is, is incredible. It's incredible because we're just straight up giving God all the glory here. Amen? Amen. And there's not, think about, let me tell you, the enemy is not too happy about this whole tabernacle prayer. I guarantee you that. But I, if you want transformation in your life, this is what we need to do. This is what my church is going to start doing again. Because the enemy tried to take us away from this. But I want us to do it as individuals. Amen. I'm going to, I'm going to. I'm going to see how I'm going to like do like a little a little outline maybe you could do it for me so people could just have a paper or whatever and and follow it like go down maybe I could like somebody could write it and then I'll post it on Facebook and you could screenshot it or something I don't know but if you're taking notes take notes because you could start doing your tabernacle prayer today when this preaching is over you could start doing it We're going to do a little demonstration. I got the word now. Demonstration. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let me tell you, when we get to this place, this is when we start. Think about if we're doing this, how is is God going to feel? Think about it. When we're doing all this, sacrificing, doing everything, you know, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, Prince of Peace, think about it. We're knocking at God's heart right here. Mm-hmm. And we already got, we already put on some priestly garments because all the garbage, we left it behind already. We, we went into that, that sacrifice. Amen. We've been washed with his word. Now we're, now we're just praising him. Amen. We're, we're, we're doing what needs to be done. Philippians 2.4 um, says, Let each of us let each of you look out not only for your own interests, but also for the interests of others. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So it's not about us. This is not about us. This is about everything else. Amen. The Bible says love your neighbor as yourself, right? We need to love our neighbors. The last one, five. What is of number five? Whoo, hallelujah. We need some peace here today. We need some peace in the United States. 
Who would agree with me there? Yes. <laughs> we need some peace in the middle of all this chaos that's going on. In this poll, we could spend an hour in this poll right here. In this pillar, we because we need some peace. This is where we, we ask God to bring peace in our homes. Peace in my neighbor's home. Peace in my neighborhood. Peace in the White House. Peace in the government. Peace in this nation. Bring peace in the whole world. Because there no, there's no peace out there. Everyone is fighting everyone. There's a lot of peace to be preaching out there right now. Because there's no peace in the world that we're living. Imagine we're praying for peace. Amen? And Jesus has given us that peace. Jesus has given us that peace. And we need to preach that peace. We need to be praying for peace. Peace in my life. A lot of us, a lot of you that are looking at this video, you're like, that's my, that's my pillow right there because I need some peace. Because <laughs> there's a chaos going on out there. There's chaos going on in my life. There's chaos going on in my family. My church is chaotic. This is where we're going to say, Lord, I need some peace. Amen. Jesus says in John 14, 27, peace, I leave you. My peace, I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid because Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. Who gives us that peace? Jesus. Oh, Rabbi Shaya. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. You need peace in your life? You need God to move in your life today? Start doing this tabernacle prayer. I'm going to end right there. This is, I'm, I'm going to keep going next week. Amen. I'm going to end right there because Jesus is the Prince of Peace. We don't need to be troubled anymore. Amen. We need to give this peace to Him. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord. So, so um, and these polls, we're, we're looking at Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. So those that are watching, we're going to do a little demonstration of those that are here. And we're going to go through the... The tabernacle prayer until the 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 holy the holy place. Amen. We're gonna end at the five pillars. So I'm gonna start with the gate, and all of us here have done it, so we know how to do it. But I want the viewers that are viewing to see how it's done, and and just when we when this video is over, just go ahead and do it. Do it in your house. Do it tomorrow in the morning. Do it throughout this whole week. Start doing it until the five pillars. And then next week, when I finish the whole thing, you go through the whole plan. Amen? And this is just a demonstration. This is not how you need to do it. This is, you do it how God is guiding you to do it. But this is just a pattern that, that we're going to follow. But if God talks to you about something else, then you pray about something else. Amen? And we're going to go through every piece of furniture now, and, and we're going to do a little demonstration here. Amen. I'm going to start, and we're going to go around the room. Amen. The first piece of furniture is the gate. This is where I come, Lord, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for salvation, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that, that I've been saved, Lord, that you saved me, Lord. 27 years ago, I was a sinner, Lord, and you came into my life, Father God. I walked into that gate. I walked into this room, Father God. I walked, Father God, into salvation, Lord, and I thank you for my salvation. I praise you, Father God, this morning, Lord, I own this afternoon, Lord God. I praise you, Father God, because you have been good to me. Lord, I come into your gates with thanksgiving and praise father god i thank you for salvation lord i give you all the praise all the honor and all the glory father god in jesus name thank you for the gate thank you for the gate lord thank you jesus amen father i just want to say thank you my lord jesus that i can come before your altar right now lord you are my salvation lord jesus and i just want to say thank you lord lord i just come before you and ask you lord that you will continue um, to work in my life, Lord, and I, I ask your forgiveness, Lord, for times that, you know, I've, I've acted in rebellion, Lord, that I've wanted my own way, my father, and, 
and I haven't, um, you know, given you my desires or, or those things that I want in my life, Lord, and I want to do them in my own fashion. And I, I ask you to forgive me, Lord. I ask you to um, burn those things away out of my life, Lord. I, I give you full access, Lord Jesus, to those things that are not pleasing to you, God. And, and I confess, Lord, that, you know, I have wrong thoughts sometimes, Lord, and, and I have wrong actions, Lord Jesus. And I just ask you to, um, to work in my heart, Lord, and, and I, I give you access for correction, Lord Jesus. I just repent, Lord, for, for actions, Lord, that don't glorify you or, or don't um, bring, um, bring you in, into those areas of my life. So I ask you to forgive me, Lord, and I, I give you my life again, Lord, and I ask you to just burn away those things that aren't pleasing. And I, and I choose to partner with you today, Lord, to kill those things that aren't pleasing to you in my life. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Thank Amen. you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God, for the labor, I thank you that we're able to wash everything that, that we're able to sacrifice to you off of our skin and off of our minds. I thank you that when we wash, we're going to be able to be cleansed by your word. I thank you that you're going to show us all of our, sh our faults and our shortcomings, and that you're going to help us get through everything that we need to get through. And that when we're able to look through those mirrors, we're going to see your beauty and that we're going to be able to see everything that that we need to fix and that you're going to help us through it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Lord, I thank you because you are wonderful. I thank you because there's no one like you and that you are above everything and everyone in our life, Lord, in my life, God. I thank you, Father, because you never cease to amaze, Lord, because even if you do the same thing twice, you've never done it twice, Lord. Everything is new and fresh, and, and you are new and fresh every day, God. I thank you for your wisdom, how wonderful it is, how your word is sweeter than life, God, that you are sweetness itself, Lord. I thank you for how amazing and, and marvelous you are. I thank you, God. I thank you, God, because you are the greatest friend, Lord. You are the greatest companion, yes, Lord. Lord. Thank that you, you are Jesus. more than just my Savior. You are my Lord. You are my best friend. You are everything I could ever ask or need or want and more, Lord. You are more than, a, than I could have ever imagined or dreamed or hoped for, Father. That you went beyond everything that I could have ever come up with, Lord. And you just are always breaking barriers, Father. I thank you, Lord, because of your wonderful thoughts towards me. I thank you because of your wonderful plan for me, Lord. I thank you because when you saw me just kicking over in, in sin and garbage, Lord, you were so wonderfully merciful and kind and, and loving that you reached down before I even had a thought of you, God, before I was even born, Lord, and you knew how crazy I would be, Father. You love me enough and you are so wonderful to just reach down and save me, Father, before the foundations of the earth, Lord. You knew me, Lord, and I thank you because how wonderful you are and how amazing you are, Lord. I can never get tired of it, Lord. I worship you, Father. I just worship you, God, because you're so amazing, Lord, and you never cease to amaze me, Father. I just worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. And Father, thank you for the second pillar, Lord Jesus, that is the counselor, Lord. Thank you for always being there for us, Lord. Thank you for the, the, being there for me, my Lord. Thank you for counseling me, Lord, through the good and through the bad and through the hard times, Lord. We just thank you, Lord Jesus. I just thank you, Lord Jesus, that I could just depend on you, Father, in every, every need, Lord, that you would never guide me wrong, Father. You always, always, Father, you know, are eager, Lord Jesus, to just, you know, to speak that that, that word of encouragement, Lord Jesus, that word that is going to take me to the next level, God, that word that is going to, you know, help me humble myself, Lord, you know, to just be encouraged, Lord, to love on others, Lord, to just be peaceful, Lord, that when I don't feel peaceful, Lord Jesus, you counsel me, Lord Jesus, to to just, you know, um, just, just to do what's right, my God, and I am so grateful, Lord, that it's not only that I be counseled to do what's right for my, for my own life, Lord, but that counsel, Lord Jesus, will be just transferable, Lord Jesus, like I could just you know, I radiate, Lord Jesus, you know, that which you've given me, Lord, it is to help through through the wisdom, Lord, to speak it unto others, my God. I thank you for your counsel. I receive your counsel, and because I receive your counsel, Lord Jesus, you know, I declare that wisdom is in my life, Lord, and that that wisdom, Lord Jesus, just, you know, is a helping hand unto others, for we represent you. Thank you for being counselor. Thank you for giving me wisdom, Lord, and thank you that I could, you know, not only partake, but to give, Lord, in Jesus' name. 
Hallelujah. Father, as we come to the next pillar, Lord, this the mighty God, Lord. You're mighty. You're mighty. Hallelujah. You're so mighty, Lord God. And and I thank you for your mightiness. I don't even know if that's a word, Lord, but you are mighty, Father. You're mighty to save. You're mighty to deliver, Father God. And this pillar, I come to lift up all those pastors, Father, that need your mighty hand in, in, in their lives, Father God. Those evangelists, Father God. Those missionaries, Father. Those that are out there preaching your word, they need your mighty power in their hands, in their lives today, Father God. And I lift them up to you, Father God. All those that are out out there Lord you are mighty be mighty in their lives so they could be mighty in you Lord God and I thank you Lord for this this time of of in this pillar Lord God that we could declare your mightiness Lord over each and every one of these that are out there doing your work Father God in Jesus name Lord amen and Lord, I thank you for pillar number four. I thank you for being the everlasting Father. Woo, hallelujah. Thank you. I just want to say thank you that you are my loving Father, that you are my stern Father. I just want to say that, that, that you keep me on the right path as my dad. And I want to say thank you for that, Lord. I pray, my God, that the name of Jesus would be exalted in every circumstance, my Father, that that I'm that not only myself, but everyone is lifting before you right now, Lord. God, right now, my God, I pray for the sick, not only those that are dealing with coronavirus, Lord, but those that are dealing with um, ailments, illnesses, syndromes, gross, my God, tumors, Lord, those that are just now getting um, bad news, Lord, blood disorders, Lord, you know, um, iron deficiencies, God, all of those things, Lord, that have come to attack the people's body, my Lord Jesus, I lift them up before you, for your word says that by your stripes they are healed, Lord. So I pray for those that are just now getting the, the news of a sickness, and I pray for those, Lord, that have um, been placed into a hospice or, or that are, are getting you ready to pass, Lord. I just declare your healing touch over them, my Father, whether it's in, you know, this side of heaven, Lord, or you're going to heal them on the other side side, Lord. I just want to say thank you and that you be yes, exalted, Lord. Lord Jesus, by your stripes, Lord. Those that are afflicted, God, with um, with physical uh, disabilities, mental disabilities, Lord, I lift them up to you and I just thank you that you're working, Lord, the drug abuse, uh, the, the drug addicts, the the abused ones, Lord, the abortion-minded, Father, I lift them up before you, Lord Jesus, homeless, God, and I just ask that you would show yourself um, to be exalted in their lives, to yes, be the Lord. answer to their problems, Lord, to meet them where they are right now, Lord, and that they will come to know the love of the Father right now, Lord, in each of their circumstances. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And God, I pray for this last pillar. I pray and I thank you that you're the Prince of Peace, and I thank you that you're going to be able to give peace to everybody who's been working in the government and all of the people who have been um, putting their health at risk, helping everybody around them. And I thank you that you're bringing everybody that knows you peace and security, knowing that you are God and that you are in control of everything. I pray for peace in our neighborhood and everywhere um, surrounding us. I pray for our government in the White House. I pray that Trump is going to be able to make the right decisions and that we're going to bring peace to everyone around him and that even though this time is confusing that we're going to be able to have a peaceful mind and that I think that you haven't given us a spirit of fear but of love, power, and a, a sound mind. Amen. And I think that we're going to be able to be peaceful and that when we pray it's going to be sincere and that everything's going to be able to go the way that you plan it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So you have part of the tabernacle prayer. You could start doing that part already because I believe that this is going to be something that's going to transform people's lives. Amen? Amen. And I believe if you start doing this tabernacle prayer, your life is going to be changed and transformed. You're going to you're going to find that first love. That love, there's a lot of people out there that are listening to me that have lost their love for Christ. And this is going to bring that love back to you. But when we do, when you do this prayer, don't do it just out of a routine. We need to come clean. We need to pour out our lives to Him. Just not just a routine prayer. We need to like, Lord, do with me what, what you want. Amen. And, and I believe people's 
lives out there are going to be transformed. People are going to fall back in love with Jesus. Amen. Thank you for watching. Until next week, I have a, a, I think I'm going to finish the tabernacle prayer, but start doing your tabernacle prayer. Amen. God bless you and thank you for watching.